everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at Microsoft's uh, data mining uh, for SQL Server analysis services. This uh, demonstration is not exhaustive. It's just um, kind of an overview of how the pieces kind of go together and uh, what it means. So let's uh, let's get started. First of all, I've set up a, a demonstration similar to Microsoft's tutorial, uh, one that they have on the internet. The, um, the tutorial and my demo revolves around using AdventureWorks uh, Data Warehouse 2012. So I have included that in my little uh, demonstration here. I've got uh, an MDF, an LDF file that uh, needs to be attached. So once those get attached, then we can start working with it. And I've got this little script file that we're going to set things up. Now, uh, first of all, the scenario is that we have a list of customers that um, have bought things from us. This is in our database. But um, the deal is, is that as we've looked at the data and reports over the over time, we've seen that customers buy our products more if they don't have children. So apparently these are, now AdventureWorks is expensive bicycles. And apparently the scenario has shown, uh, reporting has shown us that people with no children are more likely to buy very expensive bicycles. So whether that's true or not, who knows. But in this fictitious scenario, that is true, and so we're going to, to work with that. Now, um, the other part of the scenario is imagine we're opening up a new store. We want to send out some advertising um, to you know people in the area, and we want to offer some kind of discount on the new products or whatever. But we want to target only people who don't have children. So we look around to find a mailing list and we find one, but it doesn't include the number of children. So we are going to have to try to predict the number of children based on other facts. And that's where the whole thing starts. Now you can blow lots of holes into the, the theories of predicting how many children people have based on how many cars they own and whether they're married or whether they own a house or whatever. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The, the fact is, is that this is just a, a scenario that it will highlight how data mining might work. As I said, the database has to be set up. Um, I've already got it set up, so as long as I put it in the, uh, the right folder and run the code, it should attach. <clears throat> and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build a different database. This one is actually a database that I call Data Mining Demo. And this is going to be the one that we're, we're working with for our mailing list. Now, I don't want to type out uh, a mailing list, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and steal some code, or excuse me, steal some data from AdventureWorks and pretend it's a whole new customer. So I'm going to steal things that are going to be important to us, such as marital status and gender, income, total number of children <clears throat> and date. Now, uh, this is our existing customers. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. That's 18,000. And then I'm going to, again, come up with some fictitious ones. This is 10,000 off the same database, but I'm not getting their name. I'm not getting their, uh, their individual customer key. I'm making up a new one. So we're going to pretend that these are new customers. We don't have a name for them, but we do have information that we can use to kind of predict the number of children. So that's marital status, gender, and uh, income. Okay, so now this is the data we have in our... Now, did I not run this correctly? Oh, I just never focused on that anything but that database. So this is what we have in the current customer list. Um, you can see we have customer key and we have birth date and various other things. Um, this is the potential customers. These are what we have for potential customers. You can see the numbering systems uh, different. It starts at one versus this one. It starts, you know, at 11,000. And um, we can make reports against that, of course. I mean, if I go through and use a group by statement, I can start seeing some demographics with that. In fact, that is the classic way we have been mining data. 
looking at uh, this report, I can see that the, the total number of children at home in our current demographic is zero when these combinations up here occur. The combinations are, let me actually add another one, total customer. Uh, I didn't quite work, did it now? Okay, so total children and then total customers. I guess I really want it descending. Right. So the most likely scenario is somebody's single, they're male, their income is thirty thousand, they're most likely to this to buy one of our bikes um, basically followed by single females same number and um, then followed by single females of 40,000 single males of uh, 40,000 and I'm seeing a pattern here so it looks like single is definitely more important than gender as far as being one of our customers income um, oddly enough, you would think that uh, this would have a bigger factor, but I'm not really seeing that. And then it starts, uh, you know, coming out to our married folks with, uh, within a certain income bracket. But um, the, the point is, and I said uh, likely to buy a bike, but really it's likely to have zero children. Not likely to buy a bike. But um, since the, uh, the made up correlation is that if they have zero children, they're more likely to buy a bike. And that's kind of what we're looking for. Well, um, we can get some automatic reports about the patterns in our data without having to write code like this using analysis service data mining. That's what it does. It gives you simple little reports automatically by going through a wizard, putting in some data to, to look at, telling it what kind of algorithms you want to use for grouping things together, and then looking at the pre-made reports. And that's kind of cool. You can also go through and do some predictive things with it, um, but that's a little bit more hit or miss, depending on, you know, it's garbage in, putting garbage uh, data into the system. You'll get garbage data out of the system. Uh, but the reporting piece is, is pretty solid, uh, although it's nothing to get too excited about. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So uh, to do so, I'm going to let's open up this pre-made project I have. And as you um, go through, if you go out to Microsoft's tutorial, and you go through the tutorial, they'll, they'll walk you through the process of getting it all set up. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. It basically, you just have to have gone through and set up some kind of connection. A data source view. I got the current customers. I'm going to use the current customers for my data mining model and, and later on be able to query the potential customers. Um, and then when I set up the data mining structure, I'll go through and <clears throat> walking through the, uh, the wizard, choose different uh, like mining models. So it's not too bad actually. You just go click on here, say next. An existing relational database or you can pull it from a queue if you have one set up you choose the type of algorithms you want to use a mining model as they call it um, it doesn't really matter much because you can always add on more uh, neural network sounds fun now I said it doesn't matter much but um, that's not quite true because each algorithm is a little better about uh, giving you report data on certain uh, prediction 
certain um, correlations. So you have to to use the actual proper one for like regression um, reports or uh, clustering reports, etc. There's more information out there again on Microsoft's site, but in, in this case, I'm just showing you how the the, the wizard works. So I, I click on the current customer because that's what I want to actually uh, have it give me my reports on and later on I'll use that for um, prediction. And then I choose what is the key column. Well I've got a name key that helps a lot. And then the inputs that I'm looking at are um, like gender, marital status, um, yearly income, to tell you the truth, the birth date would probably be quite handy date, but I'm leaving it up for right now. Uh, and then I go through and say, like, total number of children is what I'm trying to predict. And then they can be individual values. Yearly income could be discretized, in which case it goes through and groups things together for me, which is kind of handy. Uh, total number of children, that is a discrete value. So single value, single value, single value. Um, this one, again, is kind of nice to group together because that's why you get a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it at discrete because it's already been blocked off as 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. But anyway, I'll go ahead and say next. And then we have to figure out how much of the, the what was that, 18,000 rows, I think it was? 18,000 rows we want to use for testing the, um, the data. And... The testing part is really handy because then it can go through and run through the algorithm, gives you its uh, predictions, and then test to make sure that how well the predictions worked. So we actually know that a uh, certain combination has zero children, and it comes out that the guess is zero children. That's a match. Uh, the testing is important. So leave it like that, and then just go through and give it some kind of name. Uh, the data mining model is um, going to be, this is neural network, so I don't know how about NN. And then the current customer is, uh, is a collection of, the structure is a collection of models, so I'll go ahead and use models. This. Allowing drill through is kind of handy because you can go through and kind of drill down into an individual um, record and see what the combination was. Uh, and you can turn it on later, but I'll, I'll go ahead and finish it. So now I have this. I have to, in order to be able to, to um, view the reports, I have to actually go ahead and, and publish this out to announce the server. And with that done, I can now go through and take a look at these reports. Not sure why it does that, but it does. So in this report I can see that certain combinations are, you know, favoring one value over another. So like the difference between one child and zero children um, a single value strongly favors, favors zero. A marital status of married favors one. So you can get comparison values here. Now these reports, like I said, aren't really all that fancy. And you usually get um, a couple of different views. Uh, this one here is the generic statistical breakdown. For those who are statisticians out there, they actually get quite excited about this part because now they can really get at how it did its predictions. But um, that's the way it works. And then you can you can go through and take a look at uh, what they call a lift chart, in which case it'll go through and show you some basic predictive capabilities. Uh, I should set it to a particular value. Let's say I'm trying to predict zero. And it'll go sh through and show me that uh, the random guess model would be you give me 100% of the uh, the answers and I'll be able to to, <laughs> to um, uh, data and I'll get be able to predict it you know 100% of the time with uh, the values. 
but um, and then the ideal would be that with a very short amount of value uh, data, we'd be able to make a, a high level prediction predictions, and then um, continue on. You can see that our um, neural network is actually performing certainly better than the random guess, but certainly not ideal. And what we would do is we'd go through and add on other data mining models, like here, I'd click on that, and add another one. Let's see, Microsoft cluster. Process again. And then after that, we'd be able to try that one out and see how um, how that fared in comparison to the neural network. Now I'm going through this really quickly, and like I said, there are, it's not, you don't just like randomly have to to guess which one's going to work with um, some additional study. You'll be able to choose between which one's the most likely to work the best for you. But um, this is the, the basics of how it works, and you can see now I'm getting additional reports. Again, they're nothing really fancy, but uh, they do give you a lot of information for a little effort. Remember that I was able to, to create a simple report and to extract out some information by just using a simple group by. This is just yet another way of doing that to give you information about your your uh, current data. And from that perspective, I think this is quite handy. I can take a, um, a set of values. I can pop them into this system very quickly uh, and then get some useful information about the, the makeup of that data without having to write a whole lot of group by statements. In and of itself, that's pretty handy. The prediction piece, again, it, uh, it only works as well as um, it's only going to work as well as it can based on whether the algorithm is of use to, uh, use to you and of course the, the data you put in um, determines what kind of useful information you get out. Well that's it. I'm going to recommend you go out to Microsoft's uh, tutorial uh, and take a look at the basic data mining tutorial. This will cover a lot more of uh, what goes into it. There's also a, uh, actually this is just the overview documents, but there's also, like I said, a tutorial that you can do. There it is. There's actually a couple, but uh, just going through the basic one will give you quite a lot of, uh, of useful information about how this works. And I think it's uh, well worth your time to, to go ahead and, and look at that if you're the least bit interested in Microsoft's data mining. Now, you'll notice that the, uh, the data mining stuff, uh, tutorial and documents, are pretty old now. They're SQL Server 2014. They've never updated to a, a newer version. I'm not sure if they're planning on doing that soon. So I'm not sure what that uh, forebodes for the uh, future of analysis service data mining. My guess is that they're probably working on something, uh, a newer structure with uh, the tabular support so they can include it in Power BI as well as analysis server. But I really don't know. All I know is that uh, this tutorial does indeed work with SQL Server 2016. Um, so it's still worth going through. Uh, I've had it checked out. It does work. So you should uh, be able to go ahead and go through it and uh, learn more about Microsoft's data mining tools. Okay, that's it for this video. Take care.